Welcome to our 46th episode of SpaceX in the News. My name's Kevin, and today we're picking up where we left off in our last episode with Starhopper. Then we'll discuss some exciting new developments with Starship. Then we'll finish up by talking about the future and what missions are coming our way. SpaceX is only getting started, and so are we. So as I'm sure you're already well aware, SpaceX passed a huge milestone this week with Starhopper's 150 meter flight, taking them another step closer to reaching Mars. I showed this SpaceX drone footage in my last bit, but now that we've had time to digest what we saw, I wanted to take a brief moment to share what has since been circulating around the community concerning this hop. Although the flight was an obvious success, it shouldn't come as a surprise that it may have contained some hiccups. Sure, at first glance, the flight looked seamless and clean. It was no doubt an inspiring and awesome memory in the making. But upon touchdown, you may have noticed that the engine's plume changed color and brightness. Some say this may have been caused by the Raptor engine's need to lower its throttling, with others speculating that the engine could have been damaged. Regardless of which is true, the flying water tower made a bullseye landing on the pad. Then footage captured by the everyday astronaut managed to capture a COPV sitting atop of the vehicle that was probably used to house nitrogen gas for the ACS thrusters, shoot off like a second stage engine. And finally, one of Starhopper's crumple shoes was also lying on the launch pad, but those are expendable parts and they did their job well. I believe we can all concur that the test was by far a success, but to what degree will be determined by SpaceX's analysis. Meanwhile, and for now, progress is ramping up for both Starship prototypes Mark 1 and Mark 2. A new structure is going up at the construction site in Boca Chica, and not only have new tanks been spotted coming on the scene, but local resident Boca Chica Maria also captured a new Raptor engine moving into town. This engine could be used for Starship fit checks or it could be used as one of the three Raptor engines that will take Starhopper to the skies. But as far as the Coco Starship is concerned, we should all expect things to slow a bit as Hurricane Dorian approaches landfall. It should reach the site tomorrow and wouldn't be the first time such weather has affected the American space program. In 2016, Hurricane Matthew cost Kennedy Space Center millions of dollars in damages. And just this year in Boca Chica, strong winds toppled over Starhopper's former nose cone. However, SpaceX did learn from the blunder and began ratcheting down their rockets right after. But here's to hoping that they have something planned for the Coco site this weekend. As you can see in Seymour Holdings images here, the new hangar does have a giant bay door installed. Maybe they'll wheel as many parts of Mark II into the facility before the storm reaches them. By the time you watch this, more information may be available. And if so, I'll be putting it in this episode's addendum over on Patreon, link in the description. Elon Musk confirmed the new date for his Starship press presentation on Twitter this week. It's now slated for September 28th, the anniversary of SpaceX reaching orbit for the first time with their Falcon 1 vehicle. And as an added bonus, by that time the Starship and Boca Chica will be fully assembled. As expected, Elon also said that Starship should fly to 20 kilometers in October, and further that orbit-ready Raptor engines will be good to go in two to three months. Maybe Raptor 10 is the one Maria captured coming into Boca Chica. But what blew everyone's mind was Elon's tweet that he shared concerning his vision for Starship's future. It's going to get bigger. I mean a lot bigger. For those of you who are OG SpaceX nerds, do you remember how big the ITS was supposed to be? 12 meters in diameter, much bigger compared to Starship's current nine meter diameter. Well now Elon has given us hope for a future Starship, 2.0 if you will, that will be exactly twice that. And if you do the math correctly, that equates to a Starship that is actually four times bigger than the current design. You can line up a Falcon 1, a Falcon 9, and a Falcon Heavy side by side and still fit them all into an 18 meter super heavy booster with room to spare. And according to Teslarati.com, a vehicle of this magnitude would require no less than 100 Raptor engines just to lift it an inch. It would decimate the Cape if you launched it from pad 39A. It would vaporize the entire ocean if you launched it from a sea platform. SpaceX is just gonna have to invade and conquer one of the seven continents. I nominate Antarctica. Penguins are pacifist and easy to rule over. But now let's get into some missions. SpaceX just recovered their thrice flown cargo dragon capsule from the ISS that launched on CRS-18. Local photographer Pauline Acklin captured the fate of those Starship heat shield tiles they placed on part of Dragon's rim. Hard to tell how they sufficed, but I'm sure Elon will mention it in his upcoming Starship presentation. Things are progressing for Demo 2, the first commercial crew mission that will take American astronauts to space upon a Falcon 9 rocket. The first human rated booster just underwent its static fire test, and Elon even tweeted out some more pics of the crew arm atop Pad 39A. The launch is still widely expected to be in early 2020. SpaceX also updated their website to include a page dedicated to their new ride sharing program with monthly missions that can be yours as low as $1 million, Bob. Unlike traditional ride share opportunities, these missions will not depend on a primary payload, but will only contain small sats of several paying customers. These launches are available starting in March of 2020. And what's really interesting is that SpaceX is even offering up room on their upcoming Starlink missions. So it makes you ponder how many of these missions you're looking at here are Starlink missions. Hmm. 
Well, that's all I have for you guys today. But before I go, I just wanted to give you guys a friendly heads up that after months of behind the scenes laboring, this channel is finally going to be rebranding itself here in the next couple days. So be on alert for that announcement because these episodes will no longer show up underneath the cloud looking name or logo. And I highly recommend now more than ever that you hit that notification bell in the corner there so you don't accidentally gloss over any future episodes. Thank you guys so much for watching. Until the next one, Godspeed.